Laura, how nice to have you here today with me. I appreciate your time. Thank uh, you. Let's talk Thank about how you got into voice acting. Well, I was an actress. I lived in New York City and I dropped out of school to pursue my dream. And uh, <laughs> I was 18 years old. And <laughs> um, uh, I started doing plays and commercials and uh, a lot of on-camera commercials. And then I came out to Los Angeles and I looked up an agent I had in New York and I said, and he said, go to this place. And I auditioned for some, something, a cartoon. I'd never auditioned for a cartoon. And they gave me uh, a monologue to read of Janine answering the phone. And I did it and I left. And that was that it. Was... You're like, oh, cool. Another audition in the books. I'll, you know, yeah, go to the I was like, and... oh, that was fun. And then I thought, oh, it's so hard out here. And my friend said, let's go work for a PR firm. They need interns. And I said, okay. So we went and we worked one day. I think it was Mike. I think it was Michael Levine PR, a big PR. But in my mind, I thought I was going to be on the phone with celebrities. But instead, I was like gluing things and you know cutting out, you know, paper and putting stamps on things. Yeah, I was like, and I thought, oh, this isn't very glamorous. And um, that the Friday, and I think on the weekend, I got a call from um the agent jeff janus and he said oh you're going to be doing a cartoon at 65 episodes plus 13 or maybe the 13 came later it was a lot i didn't know what it meant and i thought damn i'm never going back to the pr i'm not going to be a pr agent i'm not going to be doing that i'm going to be on a cartoon series so that's sort of what happened. And that was your first like foray into voice acting. Was was that your first? Uh, no, like, I thinking? had done radio and I had done um, uh, voiceover commercials, but it was my first cartoon audition. But I just approached it like an actor, and I it like it was literally a monologue that they gave me because when I got the job, they gave me the recording which was on a cassette, that's how long ago it was, <laughs> and to play to match the voice. And the voice wasn't what we know as Janine Melnitz on the Real Ghostbuster cartoon. Yeah, the heavy Brooklyn accent, the New York that accent. Came yeah. late, that came later in the room. They had me just like, hello, Ghostbusters, please hold. It was very straight sweet and my voice was quirky and higher maybe higher than it is now and um and so uh that came later in the day you know on the actual job but i booked it and i went to the studio and where i met lorenzo music maurice lamarche arsenio hall and myself am i leaving anybody oh frank welker of course and um <laughs> uh yeah who i have worked on many shows and um i met them and i just thought everybody seemed so normal and they seemed older and this is my this is all my impression and they all seemed very experienced and i met marcia no it wasn't marcia goodman it was a different director it's a different director for the first uh episode who got uh, replaced and uh, so that was it is there like um you've done both you've done acting and voice acting is there one you prefer over the other and if so why I think that now I would have such stage fright you know if I'm on a play or uh, you know I've done a lot of ADR where you are improvising there's no script so you don't have to memorize anything you're not reading lines you're not having to make lines your own I think it gave me a great training. The theater, the theater. No, the but theater. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It gave me great training, and I still, you know, I get into trouble when I don't read a piece of copy or uh, an animation audition as an actor. Like I let's look at it like, oh, this is this, this is that, and I don't think of like, what is the situation? What do I want? Who am I talking to? You know, basic acting things. So it's in a way it's everything has its own specialty. And in a way it's all the same. 
Now, you have a lot of roles. I was trying to look at you on IMDb. You have a lot of roles that just say additional crew. Like, can you clarify that? What does that mean? It's so it's so weird to see that. God knows. Um, I think <laughs> I I think it was a probably maybe ADR work where you do post and that's how it records. Because IMDb is not the be all end all of you know what really happened. They miss a lot of stuff. It was started by you know some guy in his room. You know to like put credits and then it was sold. I mean, I don't know exactly the history. So they have a lot, sometimes the information isn't always correct, but I think that's what, what it was. It was post-production, which is voice work on features. So like Foley, like crowds and stuff like that? Like no, people no, when no, they no. need- Foley, Foley is like, like- Like sound effects, okay. Like so sound effects or stomping and that's a other whole thing. No, these are actors hired, it's, um a theatrical day rate it's very good to do and um it's let's say i don't know uh Cher is talking to uh a waiter in a restaurant in a movie and i don't know why i pulled chairman and um she's sitting with meryl Sh streep and they're talking and then right next to them is an other table of people talking those people aren't voiced uh, recorded in the movie that's put in later like yeah the analog uh, dial analog dialogue it, replacement yeah dubbing it's dubbing a, a additional dialogue replacement and um so that's what i think those credits are okay interesting i mean like you've you've, you've done a ton of stuff here you've of course, obviously, the real Ghostbusters, and then you kind of found a really cool recurring role in Digimon. Can you talk about how you how you fell into that role? By accident, because I had never heard of anime, and um, it seemed dumb <laughs> when I found out I was working by myself in a closet, and that's what I do now. So. It's di it was di you it used to be all together, and then now it's just easier for people's well, schedules no, to do Well, no, anime it. was always individual. Oh, anime, anime was always was, individual. Okay. Yeah, animation was together. Anime is your, uh, it's a foreign language, so you're putting it into English, and it's, um, you're dubbing, dubbing it, and you're by yourself with an engineer and a director, or just an engineer, it depends, but in a very small space. And how I got into that was my friend said, go meet this woman, Rita, at Saban. It was at Saban. And I said... Okay, so I went and she handed me, <laughs> she handed me something, which was, um, it was a monologue also, because sometimes they would audition that way to see if you can play the whole part in a month rather than have other characters come in. And uh, it was Super Pig, a show that never really aired. <laughs> but, uh, and it was a, a girl uh, in, I think, junior high school, high school, who was the richest, smartest, braggiest girl you ever want to meet. And she thought she had everything and blah, 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 blah. And I read it. She goes, oh, okay, you're going to play Heather Hogwash and blah, blah, blah. So that's how I got into that. And I did a few shows. And then I thought, I don't want to be in a closet. And, um, uh, that's where I am now because of the pandemic. Everybody's in a closet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's changed though. I mean, I know a lot of the times. I mean, when I used to work at Wonder Wars Animation, and like they would bring in the actors individually. And I think I worked I worked there for two years, and I only oh. sat in one session, but they had everybody in the room. You know, Dan Castellan and all the the actors there. Doing it, but otherwise it was like single sessions for like an hour and they wanted you in and out like super fast it was like oh, get done that's get out. probably because they were famous more famous people and they're busy and they can't all get them in the room i mean i think it what did you do at warner brothers i was an i was an animation coordinator so i basically just a fancy word for like a production assistant were you scheduling people no but i would like i was supposed to learn and the idea was like to hire me full time but like i would learn and like i would work in coloring and then i'd work in voiceover i'd work in production oh. and with the timers and i would be running around handing people things and like all that good stuff it was interesting it was interesting to see how the, the cake was made you know how the food was yeah, made yeah 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 that sounds cool because you got a little taste of everything i did it was an inch it was a really in interesting experience i'll put it that way just like i'm sure your career in, in voice acting has been interesting very interesting <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think sometimes I didn't appreciate like how it was done or ask a lot of questions or pay attention and because I sort of, it wasn't, I, I didn't set out to be, oh, I'm going to be a voice actor. 
you know, everybody said, oh, you're like a walking sitcom. You're going to be on a sitcom. And they're giving, <laughs> they acted like they were giving them away at the, at LAX, you know, <laughs> so Yeah, and it's, it is tough. You're focused on your career. And like at the time, like you said, you don't know, like, especially like within case of the real Ghostbusters, you don't know what's going to be big, right? Like you said, there was a episode of Super Pig you did and it didn't go anywhere. Like you don't know at the time what's going and to be was, smashed And we thought in. it was so cute. We thought it was a, you know, but we we're not seeing the whole thing. And with real Ghostbusters, which you know, you have a big fan base. I didn't see, I don't remember even seeing a, a picture of Janine, like until it came on the air. I don't, it was just me. I was just doing, uh, and then when they say with the New York accent, I, I've talked about this before. I just say, oh, well, I'm from Queens and my mother has a really strong New York accent. <laughs> and I borrowed a little bit of that, I'm not as exagger actually exaggerated. And, you know, depending upon, it's funny, you know, sometimes people go, well, I think you had a stronger accent, like when they're recreating it, this, that. My mother would sometimes talk like the Queen of England, and she had such a strong <laughs> Brooklyn accent. But when she wanted to make a point, she would enunciate everything very well. So it was still nasal and it was still New York, but it was like um, everything was very pronounced and her consonant consonants were very, you know, articulated. So, you know, I think it depends who you're talking to and what's going on. And, uh, you know, um, it was something very accessible to me, but that's sort of how it happened. You've had a very uh, amazing career in voice acting. What, what do you would say is the biggest misconception from an outsider looking at your, your job in particular? What would you say in voice acting is the biggest misconception that people don't understand or don't realize? It's not just about having a, a good voice or a cute voice. I mean, that certainly helps, but, um, you know, or a distinct voice. You really have to be a good actor. So I think that's what, you know, sometimes people will come to me um, through other people. Oh, could you talk to my friend? And I remember I, I had this guy call me and he had a gorgeous voice and we just talked on the phone and his wife was some big deal at uh, Universal. And I said, oh, you have an in, but already that's great. And he seemed so shocked that I said, I think you re uh, should go get some coaching. You know, we read something together and I said, I think you should study a little bit, you know, and he just seemed really surprised because he had this gorgeous voice. And um, so I, I think that, uh, yeah, there's always somebody who's just brilliant out of the gate. You know, I mean, I don't know, like Maurice LaMarche, I mean, he was a his stand up and he did impressions. I don't know if he did like act theater acting, I have no idea, but he was brilliant. And, but he had done a lot of uh, stage, you know, stand up work that I'm aware of, you know, so that would be, I'm sure you're, I'm sure the fans know, but you have to have some kind of background, you know, 99% of the time. And then what advice would you give to like an up and comer, young voice actor who really wants to get into specifically voice acting and then voice work, like whether ADR or cartoon voices, that, that type of thing? Well, there's lots of different avenues, oh, you know, and like, um, whether they wanted, if their anime is a certain, you know, different people cast different things you know so the anime and dubbing that's like a skill and then there's um original animation which is the uh, is something like real ghostbusters and then there's e-learning which you know all corporations have e-learning things which is like reading text i don't do it so i'm not an expert but um there's a lot of people it's a lot, there's a lot of work out there for companies doing voiceover. It's a big umbrella. And I mean, I'm learning about new things all the time. Like I'm learning about audio description. Somebody said to me, you'd be so good for audio description. I go, what's that? And it's for blind people and sight impaired people. And I was like, well, I think I'd really like to do that. I'm going to see about audio description, but I don't know anything about it. Like I don't even know who to you know, how you get hired or, you know, anything like that. But so much of this is, you know, used to be who you met in the room and right. now we're not doing that so right. much, you know? Um, and so you have to, 
it's social, whether it's social media or LinkedIn or I didn't, I was in another business for a long time. So I had, would get hired by people who know me, but I wasn't really working my, my business. And I think you really, and if you're really famous, you don't have to. Right. People come to you for work at that point. Yeah. yeah like, and that's not me. I'm not saying that's me, but you know, you, you know, and that they stuck in it, but because I, I like did something else and then, um, now I'm back you know it's i'm having to learn stuff too i had to learn all the technical stuff and which now that i'm doing it i'm a lot faster than i was but it took a while i had to go mac <laughs> you know, it's, it's so awesome that you've done all these these voice works i mean specifically real ghostbusters into a lot you've done a ton of digimon stuff and then of course you know garfield and these other these other voices um now uh with social media and like instagram now like what's it been like seeing some of these franchises get a resur resurgence it, it's funny about like, I fought social media for a really long time. Like I had a friend who had a, a teenage daughter that she was um, coming uh, here to LA and she was talking all about the followers and this and she was, the, as, a, as a kid, she was on social media, but under another name. And, you know, I said, well, I think that name is, she should use her own name and, you know, and they eventually did make her use she went to her own name she wanted to use her name and they did it as a protective thing because she would play the violin and she was five years old and you know things like this and um but, but they were losing followers and i just thought oh gosh this is so silly but it's not it is the business it is the world um as far as let's say the garfield show that i was on with frank welker People are more interested. I guess it's it's running on Netflix, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't know because somehow we're not getting any <laughs> residuals. <laughs> but I hear from people, and um, but the, the the Garfield that everybody loves is Garfield and Friends, which I wasn't on, and um, so I know like with that franchise, the the people aren't don't love it as much. Um, Digimon, I was recently approached about another Digimon and I can't talk about it because I didn't do it yet, but it's supposed to go back to the original film and they're making something else out of it. I don't know what that is going to be. And I know there's, uh, there was the new Digimon that the Japanese released and that, uh, there was an English dub and the Japanese used all their cast same cast but we were all told here in the in america in los angeles mostly that we weren't going to be doing the they were replacing us and yeah, going in going in a different direction we talked about that off camera yeah yeah. yeah i i don't i thought that was like really i can understand where the guys age the 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 boys might age out a little bit if they're humans but i was a creature and i can go Patamon digivolve to i mean it's not it's so i just think that is you know the fans love the original cast of things i that's my experience that's uh they love that and so many things are getting a reboot you know, whether it's, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or, you know, whatever things are getting. People love the nostalgia of it. It's a big time for nostalgia. And like, and now you're, it feels like a, a long time ago, you know, 1986, 87, you were doing the real Ghostbusters show. And it just, with the recent uh, release of Elphonic's game with all the Ghostbusters cosmetics, and we talked about doing that little trailer with you. And you, you still sound great. I'm like, that's still Janine. Like, you know. I want to make sure to give her credit because she came to me with the idea and said, you should be in this game. I go, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and at first, uh, I thought, I, I didn't really think it was a great idea. And then she said, no, I'm going to make it seem like a leak, which she did. And it was fuzzy and all. And I, you know, I said, well, I'll record the lines and okay. And then when she, that didn't really catch on the, the leak that people didn't know because and then um and then she used the actual components from the game 
and people were like, is this real? Is this right? Is, is this real? Is this happening? Because it'd be amazing if happening? it did get that hype generated to show that the developers that there's a there's a want for this. There's an audience want for, for this. this. And then uh, I, it wasn't long after that they released those freebies of Janine because we didn't have right. the glasses. We did. She used my hair. You know, it's red. And uh, so um, so um, she, it you know then we she said let's do it again because i said oh, i don't know I, mean, <laughs> said, I don't know i mean you know they uh, so we did another little piece and then um and then she said i have this other idea i said all right well this is the la and and at this point alphonic's talking to me and saying things to me and and i said well they know who i am and i don't you know you have my number you know you and you're interested in doing something call me you know what i mean you know well, how to get a hold of me i'm right is, here they, here i sound the same i mean if they want to cross over but I didn't really expect that they would put real Ghostbusters in a game with Dan Aykroyd. I mean, it's amazing. It's really, I was so tickled and um, that they did that and that people love it. They seem to really love it. I mean, I, I can't tell, I don't know how many, how many games have been sold. I don't know anything about that, but I think I would sell a few more games if they were, if they put the real Ghostbuster right? actors in. I think they would. I mean, it, and it would get a lot of publicity, especially because there's going to be a new cartoon. No, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you said, this resurgence of nostalgia coming back to a franchise where like in, like you even said yourself, you weren't sure. Like you're like, what? Like people still care about that show? Like, it, you know, it came, it went, you know, but like now it's back and people are discovering it for the first time, discovering you for the first time, realizing how what a talented actor you are in this regard. And like, how can the fans get you into more stuff? How can we promote you and get you more work in terms of like new stuff or the real Ghostbusters are coming in for like the Netflix reboot series or, or stuff like that? I guess social media, you know, love, um, love that Laura like L-O-V-E. I am so tickled about like when I did the thing with Jamie and the, the thing, <laughs> the uh, game stuff. And I was so like, I was kind of resistant to it because I didn't want to step on anyone's toes and I didn't know if it, how it would look. And um, it was really for the fans. Right. because the fans that's all it was for me like it was like oh uh i recently went to um scotland and and holland and uh did like some ghostbuster charity stuff because so the it's such a it's a calling for the the, the ghostbuster out um fans the community, dress yeah. Up, the community, yeah, who dress up and they, you know, do good works. It's such an, it's such a, it's a family of like, you know, trying to make the world a better place. And so I went there, it was raising money for Children's Hospital. And it was, they had a Make-A-Wish kid who came through who Dan Aykroyd did a message for that was, you know, also added. I mean, it's huge, it's huge. and. Um, and and little kids i mean a lot of parents you know who are like in their late 30s so they were kids when this came on and then they're bringing their children who are like i have pictures with like five-year-olds that wanted to meet janine i right. mean that is so um and they love it and i get uh, mail you know i get you know on social media or private messages that you know i'm watching this with my kid or people post which is the best that you know when people post on twitter and they say we're watching real ghostbusters and we're watching love that laura uh janine and my my daughter is entranced and to hear that about little girls that's really nice because at the time there wasn't any um you know saucy kind of female characters now at 20 i wasn't thinking about that really i was it was a different world you know, I was just yeah thinking it, was, it yeah. was a fun part but um to hear that now that oh wow that that it makes an impression and that you know um they really respond to it it's great oh yeah you're absolutely right like looking back at that role now it, part of it to the writing as well but to your credit bringing a character to life that was 
well represented and like mm -hmm. really strong it's something you didn't see in children's television you know yeah. the, the, the girl would always be the one being rescued or think everything is gross right you right, know you right, became right. a ghostbuster for episode there had been petitions online to make janine oh. a, a visual ghostbuster like you know put the pattern in the game and put her in other media and stuff like that and they never well, did, unfortunately, but that's one of my favorite episodes, you know, is, and like Janine's Genie. There's a ton of really good episodes that are focused around your your character that you really yeah. breath life into and really gave a lot of, like you said, girls, like you don't have to be a damsel. You know, you can be moody and snappy and, and quick and tell the boys when they're wrong. You know what I mean? Like that was some, that's a cool thing, you know, and it's, 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 it's much more like uh, observed it now, but back, you know, it didn't, it, it was yeah, not and also thing. we didn't get the scripts in advance. Like that's another thing people don't realize. We might've gotten them, a couple of them we did, uh, like I, I remember getting something, either I picked up from the agents or it was mailed to me, but most of the time you just got there and you just opened it up. And I and think you just you read, yeah. You just read. And so you have to sound like you're not reading. There was no, I don't remember a run through. I mean, some cartoons they'll tell you on Garfield, um, Mark Evanier would always tell us, okay, this is what happens. Uh, this happens and this happens. So you know where the story's going, but because I was playing twins, I tended to record on my own anyway. Like I would just read it once and then I'd have to double have me come in late. So I would have, it would be the same voice, but that's how they did that and that particular show but uh it's all quick it's that's another thing if you're going to do cartoons you have to be very facile you know if they'll say do it this way no do it this way no do okay okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'd love to i feel that you know there's more janine in me and i would love to bring her back because i think the stories to tell now would be um elevated in that you know the storylines and um of things that you know we expect uh young women to do and so i think it could just be a blast you know, i would love to see like janine like speaking where ghostbusters are going in a modern day i would love to see the janine character come back and maybe be like the cfo of the franchise you know the chief financial officer that runs every that you know number two to the main ceo you know that would be so cool yeah. to see or have another, you know, maybe they have two firehouses. Maybe right. They, yeah, more than one. The, the boys are in the country and she's in New York City. I don't know. <laughs> so what what can we expect next? Week? Can you, is there anything you mentioned Digimon? You can't talk about it quite yet. But what do you what can we look forward to from you in the future in terms of voice acting? I don't know. <laughs> Anything is possible. Anything's possible. I really don't know. I'm not being coy. You know, I feel like I'm just starting. I really do because I had the break and now I, so I feel like I'm just starting and um, I really am very motivated and passionate and excited about what's next. So we'll see.